to the K. A to the K. A to the K. A to the K. AEW Dynasty is just around the corner, and so strap yourselves in for the A to the K Wrestling Show's predictions. Kicking things off on Zero Hour, the pre-show, we have The Acclaimed and Daddy Ass taking on Bullet Club Gold, titles for titles, so both the AEW and Ring of Honor trio titles on the line in this one. Um, obviously, these guys formally joined up for a little bit, didn't last very long now, we're getting to a point where I guess what they're going to do here is they're going to merge the championships. So um, interesting approach, but as much as I love the acclaimed, as much as I love Billy Gunn, former guest of the show, um, it's going to be a tough one because it's the, it's the kickoff match. You want to get the fans happy and upbeat for it. So do you go with that approach? Maybe, but I just can't see it. I think Bullet Club Gold um, are going to be the guys to end up with the win in this one and therefore will be on both Ring of Honor and AEW going forward. Um, so yeah, interesting opening match, I think, and one that is um, pretty big, feels pretty big for Zero Hour. Kicking off the main card, however, the FTW Championship will be on the line for reasons, I guess. Um, Hook taking on Chris Jericho in this one, and... Ah, part of me thinks Jericho, you know, I think Hook should be the one that comes out of it, let's be honest, but Jericho with the whole Lionheart uh, throwback to his, his previous gimmicks and things like that, part of me thinks that maybe we're going to get some sort of Chris Jericho ECW reinvention here, so Jericho somehow turning very much heel in the process, manages to take out Hook, the new FTW uh, champ, and then... Yeah, does something ECW-ish off the back of it. But yeah, I'd love Hook to win, but sneaky suspicions tell me Jericho might become the new FTW champion. Following on from this, we have an interesting team, Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe all teaming up to take on House of Black. Now, I feel like House of Black should win this, for whatever reason, they just can't seem to get any momentum. This isn't just like recently, like it's like for the longest time ever. Obviously, Julia's absolutely killing it doing her thing, but House of Black just, I don't know, they, they've they not become the force to be reckoned with that I think a lot of us predicted they would be. Um, so as much as I think House of Black probably should win this one and set themselves up on a, a good path, I think you've got three champions in Copeland, Kingston, and, and Briscoe, so... Yeah, I'm going to go with the baby faces on this one. Unless, unless a sneaky Christian Cage appears um, and, you know, continues that thing with those two going down the line. But we will see. But for now, I'm going to predict the baby faces to pick up the win in this one. Which brings us on to a match I kind of really don't care about. I think it's that, you know, anyone who watches or listens to the show will know very much of our kind of mehness for Kyle O'Reilly and yeah Roddy Strong's been doing some good stuff on the mic but let's be honest this whole faction thing have, um, just hasn't really worked has it um, so much of a muchness this one I don't really care who wins but I can see Roddy retaining it for now maybe they'll do something down the line with Adam Cole um, turning babyface and doing something with Kyle against uh, Roddy and the other guys, but yeah, for now, Roddy Strong retains, and yeah, I don't expect this to be the end of it, unfortunately. Now, this one is very, very interesting. The AW Tag Team Championships on the line. It's now going to be a ladder match. So, this is like the third or fourth battle between uh, these two top teams. And the Young Bucks have um, said in recent interviews that. There's going to be a lot of surprises in store for the pay-per-view. So whether that means in their match, it remains to be seen. But, like, who really needs... Does FTR really need the titles? I don't know. Uh, the Young Bucks, if they got them, I think it would add an extra layer on top of their heelish personas as the EVPs. But could a wild hangman page appear in this one and ultimately help FTR get the win over the Young Bucks? Maybe. So I think if Hangman's going to appear, then the win goes to FTR. If not, I think Young Bucks, they should take it to further the storyline that they're doing with the EVP side of things. But yeah, I don't think we'll see Kenny Omega or anything like that. There could be some other surprises in store, maybe. 
But yeah, um, I don't know. It's an interesting approach what they did with the whole um, All in London footage, airing that as well. So I don't really know if it added much to the story, let's be honest. But mm, let's see if it makes another appearance again in the uh, promo packages for this one. But I'm going to go FTR if Hangman gets involved. If not, Young Bucks as the heelish EVP tag team champions. Which takes us to, yet yeah, pretty much everything in here is a title match, but that's because they have got like a gazillion titles. But we have Okada versus Pac. As much as I would love Pac to win this one, I don't think anybody is expecting Okada to lose here. Um, the question, I suppose, is whether or not they just have a match, whether there's no outside interference, whether Okada can do it all by himself, whether, I don't know, the Young Bucks do get involved here as well. Um, who knows? But again, Hangman Page has got history with both of these guys. You know, he's not long-term injured or anything as far as I'm aware, just having a bit of time off. So let's see what happens. But I think Okada has to take the win in this one. As much as I love Pac, I just think um, too soon to take the title off him. And yeah, let's see whether it furthers the story in any capacity. Which brings us to the TBS Championship, Julia Hart, Willow Nightingale. Now, this entire scene is very, very interesting. Obviously, Mercedes Monet waiting in the wings. She's pretty much declared that she will go after whoever wins in this match. Now, Julia is killing it. Love Julia Hart, the work she's doing. Um, obviously, collaborating with Danny Venon, if you're not going... Um, check her out yet you need, you need to go and do that she's a fantastic photographer and videographer we had the pleasure to have her on a behind the scenes episode recently um, but you can see from the promo packages and the vignettes and things that Ju Julia's character is just awesome she's a she's a spooky bitch and the, the spookiest bitch of all that we absolutely love so love Julia however there's reports she's got an injury she's carrying a little bit of a knock right now so um and you've got the whole dynamic with Mercedes and Willow, obviously Willow being the one that put Mercedes on the shelf for quite a period of time. So storyline-wise, what would make the most sense here would be Willow getting the win and then continuing something on with Mercedes. But, you know, if Julia does win it and she's not injured or anything like that, then who wouldn't want to see Julia versus Mercedes Monet? So I do think it's going to be Willow. And if Julia does, um, in fact, have some injuries, hopefully... Uh, she gets healed up soon and is back uh, with a bang. Which then takes us to the AEW Women's World Championship. Tony Storm, the timeless one herself, uh, against La Mera Mera, Thunder Rosa. Obviously, we love Thunder on this show. We have to. Um, the very first guest we ever had on. So we love Thunder. Uh, but... I do predict a win for Tony Storm in this one. There's still the whole thing to play out between Mariah May and Tony as well. So that's always a factor when it comes to these things. Could we, you know, potentially see the breakup of these two and that potentially cost Tony here? Like Thunder is a former champion. She never got the run that she wanted because of injury. So I'd love to see her back on top. But Tony Storm is just next level at the minute in terms of a character and a gimmick work. So yeah. I think Tony will retain, but if Mariah May gets involved and something goes wrong there, then that would perfectly set up another storyline with those two. So let's see how it goes down. But Tony Storm is the prediction here, which then takes us to what may potentially be the match of the year candidate. Will Ospreay, Brian Danielson, just an all out epic, technical, fast paced Badass war is what we've got to look forward to. And it's a fascinating one because you could hand Osprey his first loss here and that set him in a new dynamic. Like Osprey, since he's joined an AEW, has just absolutely come in. He's taken out everybody. He's undefeated. And he is essentially being geared up to be one of the top guys, if not the top guy. Um, but what an interesting spin it would be. I think everybody thinks Osprey is going to win this, but it would be a fascinatingly interesting um decision if they give it to Danielson here because then Osprey can kind of have the oh I wasn't um as good as I thought I was and it turns out Danielson is actually the best in the world so then he has to set himself up to get even better to prove that in an eventual rematch down the line but I don't know heart overhead maybe or maybe both uh Osprey has to take the win here absolutely needs to um he is the biggest kind of um thing in AW right now is an incredible free agent. They've signed him up and will 
ultimately be a world champion um, in the very near future, I think. So, yeah, Will Ospreay has to take this one. But um, you know what? If he doesn't, then I think it'll be a very interesting dynamic to see what happens. Maybe even we get an Osprey heel turn here. Maybe he just can't beat Danielson just with technical wrestling. So he has to get um, some outside interference or a, a chair or something like that. So I'm fascinated to see how it goes down. Love Osprey, love Danielson. It's going to be an absolute banger, which takes us to the main event of the evening. So Moa Joe, Swerve Strickland, surely it has to be Swerve's time now, right? Um, the one thing that, you know, we talk about surprises and things that we can look forward to that the books were talking about. What about a wild MJF? Obviously, Samoa Joe did defeat him for the world title. Now, Adam Cole's not around at the minute for whatever reason. So if MJF comes back, then he can't really go after Cole. He's still injured and all that good stuff. So could MJF come back, go after Samoa Joe, cost him the title, have something going there, and then turn his attention to Adam Cole and his little uh, gang of merry plebs, maybe? Uh, but yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be Swerve Strickland. It needs to be. He deserves it. He's been so close several times, and as, you know, as awesome as Joe has been as the champion, definitely Swerve's time. Let's see it happen. And um, yeah, a wild MJF involvement. I could very much see that happening. But that is our predictions for AW Dynasty taking place this Sunday. What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Will MJF turn up? What else is going to happen? Um, are you looking forward to the event? Are you not? Let us know all your thoughts on the socials, in the comments, and we will catch you on the next one.